The pivot functions help you to convert data between long and wide formats. We're going to start with data from the data skills package, a data table called personality. Let's load it with the data function. And then have a quick look at it. Okay. Now the personality table is answers from 15,000 participants who completed a personality questionnaire. The questionnaire had a number of questions and they're about the five factor personality scale. So the questions cover openness, neuroticism, extroversion, conscientiousness, and neuroticism. And there are a differing number of questions for each um, factor. Okay, so we have user ID here date, and our data in wide format. If you want to know more about the specific questions, you can look at the personality table here, and the, the help menu gives you the exact um, wording of each question and the instructions given to participants. Okay, so let's convert these data from wide format to long format. We want to take all of these columns, OP1 all the way through EX9, and turn them into two separate columns, one that tells you what's the question and one that tells you what's the value. And actually, we don't just want to know what question is. This is the, um, the factor, the personality factor, and the question number. We probably want that information in two separate columns. So we can start with um, the pivot longer function. So we're going to create a new object called personality long for the long version of this data set. And it will be the result of the pivot longer function. OK, so first, the pivot longer function needs to know what data set do you want to convert. So the data set is personality. We also need to know which columns do you need to take from wide to long. So remember the data that has the same value type, the same variable type spread across multiple columns, our columns OP1 through EX9. Now we can state them all separately here, but you could also use the shortcut, which I would recommend, OP1 colon EX9. And it's just all of the columns from the first to the last. We also need to tell the pivot longer function what um, the names of these columns should be converted into. And this is the names to argument. The names contain two pieces of information. So this is the domain and the question number. So we'll set the first to domain and the second to Q number. This needs to be a string vector. So if it's only one thing, it can just be a string. But if there are, there's more than one piece of information in the names and you want to put that into separate columns, you need to make a vector of strings. We also need to tell Pivot Longer how do we separate those names, OP1, OP2, EX9. How do we separate them into domain and queue number if we're going to separate them? So names sep is an argument. And we want to separate these at the second character. So we can just put the number two. If we wanted to separate them, say instead they were op underscore one, and we always wanted to separate them at the underscore, we could set name sep to underscore. But if you want to separate them at a position, you can just put that integer there. The last thing that pivot longer needs to know is what's the name of the new column that's going to contain the values? And that's just values too. And let's call that score. Okay. So if we run this function, it takes all 15 
thousand observations and creates several new rows for each participant, one for each observation in this questionnaire. And it has columns of still the user ID and date, but then the domain, O-P-N-E-E-X-C-O or A-G, the question number, and the score. Now next week, I'm going to show you how we can use this with just one more function to create, say, average scores for each domain for each person. Sometimes you might need to go from long data back to wide, and the function to do that is just called pivot wider. So let's recreate our personality object. Um, we'll call it personality wide this time, and use the pivot wider function. Just like pivot longer, it needs to know what data set it's working on, and it's going to be working on the personality long data set. Here, instead of names two, we need to know where is it getting the names from. So that will be the same thing. So we can just copy that. So the names, when it goes from this long format to a wide format, where should it get the new column header names? It should get them from these two columns, domain and queue number. Names sep, so how should we separate those names? They were separated before by nothing, so we could put nothing, but let's give them an underscore this time. So instead of op1, it would be op underscore one. And values from, where are we going to get the values that will go into the, um, into these new columns? Well, it's the same as values two in the other direction. So from score. Let's run that and now look at personality wide. It is identical to our original personality except our column names now have underscores between the um, domain and the question number, but in all other ways is identical. You may also see that sometimes when people use pivot wider, the names from and values from don't have to be um, in quotes. If the columns already exist inside data, you can use this shortcut and not quote the, um, the column names. However, when you're using pivot longer and you're creating new columns, so domain, queue number, and score don't already exist in personality, then you have to put them inside of quotation marks. And it won't work if you leave them outside out of quotation marks. You'll get an error message like this. So object score not found. That's because there is no score column in personality. This is a brand new column that you want to make, so it has to be in quotes. It might be easier to just put everything in quotes all of the time when you're referring to column names, just so you don't forget the difference between um, when you can and can't use them.